Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless run on the new dungeon that came out in the 30th anniversary, The Grasp of Avarice. Now I am going to be doing it on the Warlock. Uh, I'll be changing subclasses, weapons, yada yada, as we're going through, as the different uh, sections demand dif a different setup. So I will be keeping the Cartesian on for the whole run. I'll be starting with the Wither Horde, but I will be changing to the Chroma Rush for the boss section and the Ogre section. I'll be starting with the Threaded Needle. I will change to Sleeper Simulant for Heavy DPS. I'll be changing to the Ascendancy for the Sparrow section. I'll be using the Fallen Guillotine for the main section, the, the Fire in the Servers up at the ship. Uh... As you can see there, Linear Fusion Ammo Finder on my helmet with Protective Light. Protective Light is going to be super important during this. Uh, fusion Rifle Reloader, Shield Break Charge. The Shield Break Charge and the the, the Overload uh, were for the Master that i done. And I, I didn't really need anything else on my Gauntlets. I'm starting with Double Solar Resist and I'll be switching to Double Arc Resist after the Ogre section. I'll be starting... Uh, I will be starting with Transverse of Steps and changing to Lunar Faction for DPS sections. And I've got Particle Deconstruction uh, on my Bond. And that's the setup. Be, I'm starting with Devour, obviously. Uh, I'm starting with Devour, and then I'll be. But for the DPS sections, I will be switching to Well of Radiance. So. The new dungeon came out, there's been 5,000 videos already on it, but I wanted to get my take out, obviously. So, Grasp of Avarice. Basically, the whole kind of point of this is you've got to kill enemies, you've got to pick up or uh, exotic engram looking things, you see them there, and you have to feed them to a crystal. Now, each section demands a different amount of engrams to be picked up. This starting section at Skywatch, uh, you need to deposit, you see the crystal in the back there, you've got to deposit 50 engrams and the ground will open up and you'll drop down. This is kind of a play on, in year one of Destiny 1 there was this thing called the Loot Cave which is where we are now. It was only around for a couple of months before they patched it I think. Uh, and people would stand in the back and literally the ads here as they're doing now would just keep respawning and you can just keep shooting them and getting engrams. I, I, I never really took part in it, probably because I didn't know about it until it was almost gone. Uh, but it, it just wasn't really my thing. But for this first section, you need to collect 50 engrams. Devour allows me to just run about and shoot. Uh, keep making sure I'm getting my Wither Horde uh, down in the cave and when when the wizard comes out at least you've produced 50 orbs you might not have picked them all up but you will have produced 50 orbs which is why I try and collect them all obviously the, the more you collect and don't let any because they, they've got a shelf life of about 15 10 15 seconds so the more you collect the faster you get through the section uh, I've just uh, thinking my devour there because obviously I'm getting hit. If I use Devour to run through these sections, the ads that are coming through will keep replenishing my Devour. It just allows me to move a bit quicker. So as I said, you've got to produce engrams. Certain ads don't produce them. Shanks don't produce them. Uh, and Thrall and the Ogre section don't produce them. It's literally... In, it'll be you'll, you'll, you'll see when we get to those parts, which ones produce them. Another interesting fact is every time you pick up 10 of those engrams, you'll get your super back. Hence, if you start to work out when you're going to pick, what you're going to pick, and when you need to use your super, you can literally use your super whenever you need, as long as you know you're going to pick up 10 more engrams before a DPS section. Now... If you follow the route I'm taking here, you will not get caught by any of the traps that are lying about. There are a number of tracks if you open the wrong door. You've got to watch out watch out for pressure pressure buttons on the floor. You'll see uh, once we go into this vent, the far vent here, uh, this pressure button, this, this is a good one. But when we jump up on this side, but when, you'll see that blue arrow. Do not jump there because that is a pressure pad. And that will bring out a whole load of spikes and you can't escape them. 
So that's kind of a little jumping section. This section here, the idea is to go into these rooms, activate uh, consoles to open up more of uh, the platforms to help you get here. But you can just jump straight here. Don't bother with that console. Jump up and activate this console. And that will bring out a shrieker, which if you crouch here and you find a, a spot through the fence, you can shoot the shrieker through the fence. Now we're going to jump to where the ads are now. We won't make that jump all the way, so we're just going to land here. And then when I jump up, I'm going to throw my super, get my devour reprocked, And then activate this console at the end, which will open up the wall at the back. More ads, and then we're out of this section. So obviously, this is a solo flawless run. So I'm once these areas here, it literally is shoot what you need to shoot and move forward. I, I like to I like to get rid of this this night because if you don't when we go through this doorway here and we do this next section sometimes the knight stays up here and shoots at you so it's one less ad to be shot so this section here as you see i've dropped down i've killed those those uh fallen i'll take out that wizard and these two acolytes basically what you've got to do here is surprise surprise activate consoles go into the room clear the ads activate another console you do this three times so you've activated that console we're going to move to this next section which is room three uh i'm going to activate my devour i'm going to put my weather horde down in here and it just you know it's, it's not really super important to kill these ads but for for my own peace of mind and not leaving too much behind me still shooting at me I, i'll just get rid of them Every time, well, I say, when you come into this room, you'll have a wizard. And then, as, you, as you've already seen me do, I cleared the three fallen by putting a wither horde below me, and then I took out the wizard. For the first two consoles, so we've activated a console, then we got a wizard. There's another wizard, you'll see that red on the on the map behind me. There was another wizard, but it, she kind of flew away. So I'm going to take all these ads in here first, and then we'll deal with the wizard when we go out. That will be your last wizard. There she is. So we'll take care of her. Now what we're doing is there's some fallen over here on the left at two. And there's a scorch cannon guy, which was the whole point of this, was to get to the point where the scorch cannon vandal comes out. The scorch cannon, this is going to be a feature of the dungeon as well. The scorch cannon comes into play quite a bit. We're going to take this over to where we first killed the two acolytes. And then we're going to fire a shot into this contraption here and charge it twice. You have to charge it twice to activate this thing. And the chest I just showed you is kind of like the chest in the last wish. It'll give you a legendary piece of armor from here, armor or weapons. But it will, it can only give you stuff you've already dropped, but it'll be different rolls. So maybe a good way to get new rolls on weapons. There's two of those chests, I will show you where the other one is. So now I'm going to change the setup I'm going to be using at the Ogre. So Chroma Rush, Sleeper Simulant, uh, and I'm going to go Luna Factions because we want that faster reload. Uh, so I've got the Catalyst on 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 the the Sleeper. It's worthwhile getting. You get it from Nightfalls. It drops from any kind of Nightfall, I think, or can drop. Get it, get it, and get it done because it really increases the, the fire rate. Uh, the The... The, the charge rate of the weapon, meaning fire more shots, more DPS. So that's basically all of that's pretty straightforward, right? You just shoot what's in front of you, move forward, don't put yourself in danger. Now we're at the first boss encounter. Now there's only two boss encounters, but there, what we've just done, I don't class as encounters, that was just moving through the areas. This is the first of four encounters. So the idea here, surprise, surprise, is you have to produce uh, exotic engrams and you have to deposit them in a crystal. Now we've just ran past the crystal. For this, you need 25, to start DPS on the ogre, you need to deposit 25 engrams. Now, I produced four there, but so I didn't have to, because you see the ogre is just constantly firing. I... Uh, I didn't really want to run down right off the bat, just with four. So, what we're going to do is, I've 
killed the Vandal, I've got the Scorch Cannon now, I've came into this room, I've charged, hit the contraption above the doorway, and I've come into the room uh, to collect all, all, all of these. You have to charge it twice, like I've said. And what we're going to do is, the, the Acolytes give you one, one of these engrams. Uh, the Knights give you three. So what I'm doing, you see I've produced one on the floor. Now I'm going to open up the other side, because there's two sides. And as I say, you need 20. We've got 13 engrams at the moment. So I just fire, fire my shot into that thing, and then I just hold the charge. And, like I've already said, pick up 10 of these. You'll see here... Uh, once I've picked up 10 engrams, I will get my super back in time for DPS. So, what what kind of happens is you're gonna, I'm using, <clears throat> I'm using my fusion rifle because I'm not really gonna be using it for anything else. The sleeper's gonna be the thing that does the damage to, to the boss. I have 23, 24. There'll be a couple of guys out here. I'll get one more of these. Uh, just gonna. Take out some of the, the littler ads. Make sure that there are no ads that are gonna, you know, chase you down or whatever. If it's just thrall, it's fine because you can take them out. But as you see there, I'm run. I was running out of time. You've only got like 30, 30 seconds to once you pick up orbs. You've only got thirty seconds to deposit them. You can refresh the time by picking up another one. But after I've done this DPS, because you just rinse and repeat after this DPS, I'm gonna I'll, I'll start talking about slightly more different techniques. So as you can see there, what happened was I deposited my engrams, 25, which the ogre then got enticed by his greed, which is the theme of this uh, dungeon. By depositing the 25, I took his immunity phase off him. So now he's like, he's fair game. And you can see there, we've done just about a third damage as a three phase. So now, prob probably now we're about as, uh, we're about as vulnerable as we're going to be in this dungeon because we don't have a super because we've got to pick up 10 engrams to get a super. But I do have my rift. So the idea is it's rinse and repeat. Now, You've seen me do it once. Jump up here, fire your scorch can and kill the first two ads right here, and then run to this wall and put your rift down. Your rift is a really it's a really good utility, but it doesn't make you invincible. Make sure whatever you pick whatever engrams you pick you, you create, you have to pick up. So we'll just Kill all of these guys, and as I say, you not only get your super back when you when you collect ten engrams, you get all your abilities back. So now that you've seen me do it once, you'll you'll see me do this. I'm just waiting for these ads so I can clear them. And now I've got an engram on the floor. Now I'm going to charge this, pick up the engrams. So I fired a shot, and I'm still charging it. I'm still holding it. But when I picked it, I fired it, I knew I had an engram on the floor. I left the engram until I was leaving that area, and that refreshed my timer. And I've still got 16, so I still had, when I got over here, 16 seconds to pick up uh, another engram. So, literally, I don't have to go and deposit my engrams every time I pick them up. I can make it from one side to another and go and deposit all 25 at the same time. Just... Now, you'll see there, I don't actually have a ton of heavy. I've picked very little heavy up. What I found out here, which I, I thought was quite interesting, was how much damage the Cortesian actually does. Because I've got a bucket load of Cortesian. So, I didn't have enough time. I've only got five... Uh, five uh, sleeper, sleeper shots. I actually... It's kind of weird. I've got five sleeper shots here. And I end up with with full for the last the last section. So when I do DPS, I go up here. Why am I wasting time going up here and not doing damage at the crystal? I will explain why. He hits you hot and can kill you in 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 your well. But 
doing damage down at the crystal, although you might think it's actually quicker, you're saving some time, you're not actually. You really aren't. Uh, you do 122,000 with this setup using Sleep Over the Crit, you do 88 when you miss. If it's just a body. The, him being so close and you trying to constantly crit him, you can miss a load of DPS because he... 9 times out of 10, 8 times out of 10, he will flinch you off the headshot. So if he flinches you off 4 headshots and you hit 4 bodies, effectually you've missed a shot, a complete shot, because you've done 4 shots at 88,000 and you know that's that's 80,000 that's, that's 80, almost less damage than hitting 4 headshots. So I always go up to that room too. He can kill you in your rift, and because we want to go flawless, and this is a solo flawless guide, uh, the idea is to stay alive. So when you go into the room, it gives you uh, a more immediate cover because you can duck around the side of the wall. Because you get your super, like I've said a number of times, it feels like I'm repeating myself with that. Uh, because you get your super when you. Every time you pick up 10 orbs, you you can really afford to be uh, more aggressive once you've got, you know, once you get your supper for the first time. But after DPS is the most vulnerable you will be because you don't have your supper. And there's a chance you might not have all your abilities either. You might have to pick the, the, the engrams up to get all of those back. So again, go up into the left room, charge it, go straight. If, you, if you've got your super, which you only have the first time you go in there. The rest of the time, when you go in there, you want to... Same thing, you want to put your, your scorch can in the first two ads, and then get to the wall that I was at and put your rift down. And then at least you've got a safety zone. After that, your super, you can just run into the room right to the back where I am now, and... Uh, and put your well down and you will be 100% safe. The other thing is, and this is a feature for the Solar Flawless all the way through, if you've got protective light on, as long as you are producing orbs, so make sure your legendary weapons are masterworked, as long as you've got protective light on, it will be very hard for you to die from ads. There's a lot of solar here, which is why I went with double solar resist, which you might, you might be able to notice. It definitely felt like that during the run. I was never really in any trouble from any solar, solar damage. The reason I fire, fire the fusion rifle shot first is because all the bolts hit them. They all count for some reason for, as separate shots. So you proc your uh, particle deconstruction times five straight away. That's why you start doing the 122 with the sleeper straight away. So always prop hitting with the fusion rifle first. And that, that is that section done. Now this is probably going to be the part that's going to trip a lot of people up as the sparrow racing part. So as you can see here I'm frantically changing uh, mods because I'm going to use a rocket launcher. So I know I've got some uh, and I'm going to put double arc resist on. I know I've got some heavy here. I am not using the always on time spiral because when we're getting to the when we're getting further on, I'll explain why I'm not using my main account for this. Why this is my an ulterior account. I don't have always on time on here. I probably wouldn't have used it anyway because well, you don't need to, and that's that is the point. I'm just I was just looking for a little bit of ammo. So now this spiral section, this is what's going to trip a lot of people up on their flawless. And it took me a few runs to find the repeatable strategy in here. This is a 100% repeatable strategy. The way I'm about to show you here, the timing, everything, it's the same every time. So make sure the, the spiral that you're using reloads your weapons while you're driving. So hit that switch there, and then when you get here, hit this little tree on the left. That will activate that switch. 
And then when you get to this rock, jump off. Don't jump off your spiral. I thought I jumped off my spiral. That's the way I was doing it. Just just spiral right through there. In fact, don't. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> so I'll put my weather horde there. And then I've gone up the left. And when we hit this ramp, get off. Fire the rocket in, in between them. And it just gets straight on your spiral. The reason why you want to get straight on your spiral is... We are almost at the first switch. When the 14 second timer appears. If you kill the ads, so you see there we've got a 10, 9, 8, bang, we're back up to 12. So if we get off here, right in front of the where we need to be, fire the rocket to kill the ads, and spiral, we want to get back on our spiral before we hit the pad. And the reason for that is, we want, A, we want to be at max speed coming off the plate. Because it takes a second or two for the next one to appear. You see there. Bang. And I never even hit that switch. I didn't even hit the switch. That I don't know why I never activated that switch. But it never activated and I still had enough time. So you want to get off your spiral before you hit certain plates. And just use whether horde will work. Uh, a set of rocket launcher will work. Rocket hit the hit the ads with the rocket and then make sure you spiral through through the actual mine because like I've said you'll be at max speed when you come away from the mine and it takes it takes a second for the next mine's timer to come up. That is that's two or three seconds of time you're saving by doing that and it's that is a one hundred percent repeatable. What I was doing at the start, which is why I said get off your... I, I remember now, I just thought, oh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to keep going here. Uh, I was getting off and rocketing those ads. But uh, just drive through them if you want. It seems to work. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel a little bit stupid now, actually, because I 100% was getting off and rocketing those ads. The chest I've just showed you is the second chest. The, that's the last chest that you can get a piece of armor or weapon that you've already had. It will only it will be thirteen twenty, but it will be a different roll from what you've had. And now we're at this is kind of a cool little section. The idea here is you've got to find when you first get here, you have to find the immune server. It'll be a server with a white hue around it. You use you you get a scorch cannon, and you position the big cannons to the direction you want to go in. You fire. You don't have to charge. You got to hold it until you're in front of the cannon. You'll see me do it, and keep moving to firing yourself across till you find the server with the immunity. Then you have to kill ads and collect twenty engrams. Hand them into the crystal and you will drop the server's immunity. Once you, you drop the server's immunity and you kill the server, it then becomes a ticking bomb. And you have to position it, move it by pushing it in front of the cannon on that area and fire it at the ship. Got to do that four times to get past this. It's an, it is actually a very cool little uh, part. I think it's why I like this dungeon so much because it's so different to what we're used to. So you pick up the Scorch Cannon and then you'll see... I can already see the immune server. Oh, there he is over there. And what you do is you just fire a shot and then let it go and uh, it will throw you over to the, the area you need to go to. Once you get over here, uh, once you get over to where the server is, make sure that you rotate the cannons and make sure the cannon rotates in the direction that you need to go in. Once you get over there, make sure you proc your devourer. As you see, we've changed the devourer. There we go. We're going to be getting there. I'm just going to drop the, the Scorch Cannon because in every area there's a new Scorch Cannon Vandal. And then set about killing now. 
You'd have seen that I'd have changed. I put sword ammo, find it, and scavenger on, so that I can constantly get sword ammo and just keep sorting these these uh, drag. It's the drag and and the the the, the shanks don't actually drop engrams. It's the drag and the the there's one knight that will drop three. So you need to collect twenty of these. You see there, we're on 14. Every time I pick one up, it resets the timer. I've got 30 seconds, as I've already said. It's the same here. 30 seconds to produce enough to pick up my next engram. So I'm at 19. There we go. I'm at 20. There's the crystal. There'll be one of these on, on every level. And I'll just, any kind of ads that are left, I will, I will clear up. You probably will pick up any uh, any spare ones that are lying about any of those engrams. If you do, you have to deposit them because it will kill you. If you do not refresh after if the 30 second timer runs out and you have any of those uh, engrams, if you've picked up any of them, you've got a little timer, it will kill you. So make sure make sure you just deposit everything that you get. And as you can see, the server's turned into a bomb. So what I've got to do, once you get it in front of... You see there, I'm just going to leave it because I'm going to go and pick this heavy up. Because once you get it there, it, the, the area is set up that it rolls down to the, 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 the cannon. As you can see, it's already lined up. So I'm going to fire into the thing. You don't really need to charge it. You just need to fire it and make sure... As I say, the most important thing is to make sure that the cannon is lined up with the next, with the the kind of def the defensive orb that's protecting the shield under the ship. You've got to make sure it's lined up with the the one for that area before you fire it. Again, rinse and repeat. Uh, make sure when you get one of the things I try and do is when I get to the area, nine times out of ten, I'll try and take the scorch cannon guy out. And as long as you've got your devour prop. You've got Sword Ammo Finder. I think there was a point, point, I think it's in the last area. I didn't actually, I, I ran out of Sword Ammo, which was fine. Because I get to show in the video what, what I do when I, if that ever happens. Which is, go into the Crystal Room, put a Rift down, and use Wither Horde to, to, to keep doing that. Very, 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 very cool little section. Not really difficult. There's the Knight just clear up everything here and I need four more I'll just collect the ones that are on the ground one more out here there we go I've got my 20 and just as you can see there's the cannon there when, when you get to an, to an area I'll just put a weather horde down here for them to jump into the, if, if you've not been to that area nine times out of ten you know, the cannon will be pointing in the direction it needs to be in. Because if you haven't been there, that the cannon intrinsically will be facing the defensive orb that you've got to explode. Sometimes these... Uh, you see they're burdened by riches. I, I'll pick up that one there and I'll just deposit them. Just make sure you get rid of them if, if you pick up one by accident because... The amount of times when I was testing out these runs to start with, that the amount of times I accidentally picked one up and it killed me because I wasn't paying attention. Yep, it's lined up. So just make sure that's something that you, you keep an eye on. Pick up heavy ammo there. And there we go. Fire that to the the, defen the defensive orb. Now we're going to look for the next... There he is, over on the left-hand side. Look for the next servitor. And just rinse and repeat in every section. So I'll take this opportunity while we're just doing the exact same thing in each area to explain why I'm not on my main account. Any of you that follow me on Twitter, I have, you know, I, I post I post a fair amount of stuff that doesn't make it onto YouTube because uh, it's not long enough, 30 second clips, what have you, little bits of information. But I, I have spoke a bit over the past couple of months about what's been going on personally. I don't actually have my Xbox because my main account isn't cross saved. This account that I'm on is my main PlayStation account that I haven't haven't played since the middle of Forsaken. So I 
I actually don't have access at the moment to my Xbox account because it's on my Xbox. I, my Xbox isn't here. It's 550 miles away. So I had to build this account to do this. So that I knew that this was coming up. I knew I wanted to get this dungeon run done pretty quickly. Uh, I actually I actually got the solo flawless on Tuesday, but the run was a bit sketchy because I didn't really know what I was doing. I just managed to do it without dying. So I wanted to put out a better run, a, a, a more knowledgeable run, which is why we're now on Saturday and I'm just putting the guide out. Uh, there's been a lot going on personally, family-wise, and I'm actually going to be away for two weeks over the Christmas period because I've got to be with family because of what's been going on. So I'm going to try and get a couple of videos out today. So this is the first one, obviously. I've got a Master Nightfall because it's double Nightfall rewards, so I ran a Master. I've been running them all week, actually, because this account needs everything. So I'll put the Master out, and then I'm, I'm maybe going to try it because I've soloed it on the Hunter. And the Hunter felt actually easier than the Warlock uh, invisibility. But I'm not too sure if the DPS, if the DPS is going to be there. So make sure it's lined up, fire it. So I'm, I'll maybe try and get a hunter run done today because I'm, I leave tomorrow to go down, get down to my mum's. There's the server over the other side. Uh, so we'll have to take the left hand route, and that will be the last one. You only do four, uh, and and then all the cannons bar one. But that's if you're going for, that's if you're going for the catalyst, which there are. Another 5,000 videos on the Catalyst, so I'm pretty sure everybody that needs the Catalyst has has seen a video on it. Uh, all the cannons, after you do this, all the cannons kind of point towards the middle, and then you go and get your chest, um, and you're done. So yeah, I'll try and get out a few videos today to do you guys, because uh, obviously if I'm going to be down, down at my mum's over Christmas, uh, I'm not going to be able to make any content for the next week or two. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be playing. I'm really enjoying. Uh, I'm really enjoying the 30th anniversary. I, I, I'm really, really, really enjoying the fact that two of the OG weapons from D1 are now the DPS kind of kings at the moment. Sleeper Simulant is just insanely good. I think it might still be have usage when part or deconstruction uh, part when we part ways with that. But nowhere near as good. I mean, it's like when people are saying, "Oh, I think Anarchy's still going to be good when, when, you know, when we lo when we lose." Uh, can't remember what that mod was called, but the the grenade launcher mod. It will come back to me. And now nobody uses Anarchy. I, it will be good, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as good as it is now. But I d I do think Sleeper Simulant is going to have a lot of use. And, 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 and I'm happy about that. And from what I've seen from the Galahorn, I haven't, I haven't even finished the Catalyst yet. But from what I've seen with Galahorn, just from my own personal usage, I'm glad it's came back and it isn't, it isn't bad. My worry was that it was, it was going to be a gimmick. And it most certainly isn't a gimmick. And that, that's all you can ask for. Obviously, I, Ice Luna coming back. Uh, Thousand Yard Stair, which was probably one of my favourite uh, snipers in Destiny 1. It, in fact, it was my favourite sniper in Destiny 1. Uh, I wasn't really an IS Luna guy. I was a Palindrome. Palindrome, Thousand Yard Stair and Galahorn would be my loadout for most things. I'm just... A, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know how I feel about e even still about the Palindrome coming back and being an energy weapon. Because it means I can't, I can't have my OG loadout because... That's an energy weapon. So, there we go. So far, so far, the tips that I, I would say to get the getting the flawless is, we said to start with that the first couple of sections just shoot what's in front of you. The one thing I never had was take your time. Don't rush. Don't if 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 you feel like you're being overwhelmed or everything's moving a bit too quickly, just back away. Take a minute. You know, you're never coming in here on your first attempt. If you're worried about doing the solo flawless, you're never doing it on your first attempt. So find out when you when you fail a section, find out where your safe zones are. 
Now, for the ogre section, your safe zones are behind the box on the left and the box at the front, in front of the 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 taken, uh, the 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 fallen that are up on the ledge. There's a box that's blocking. It's it's really the ogre you've got to worry about. Once you take down a scorch cannon. Vandal works the same and it works here at the boss. Once you take down the Scorch Cannon Vandal, the Scorch Cannon won't disappear. You can leave it there for as long as. The timer only starts to come into play when you pick it up. So make sure you take the, the two ads that are going to be hitting you hard is the Vandal and the Ogre. Make sure you take, take the Vandal out and then you just have to stay in cover from the Ogre. I mean, the Fusion Rifle can take care of every other ad in there. As long as you're dropping special for it, you'll be fine. Uh, the boss section, which we're just getting to now, has safe zones as well. Everything else, the spiral section, well, if you follow the route that I, uh, I took and don't stop at the, the first thing, <laughs> you can stop at the first, you can jump off your spiral before it and rock at the first mine as well, just to clear the ads. But make sure you've cleared the ads before you go through it. Don't jump onto it, clear ads, and then try and drive away. You've lost too much time. Do it before you get onto the mine. Uh, that server section, I mean, you can really just take your time. Here, this is by far, by far, the easiest dungeon boss we've ever had. Even with even with those the two annoying the shank and the vandal this is where i th this is kind of my safe zone now i know some people are going to be like uh -huh, you might think it's easy listen watch what i'm doing on watch on the screen what i'm doing and listen to what i'm saying right so i'm using i'm using the chroma rush because mine's just got uh my uh, Chroma Rush has Rampage, so once I take the first enemy out, I've got not too much problem taking a whole heap of them. So there's the Vandal. I, I'm going to leave that Scorch Cannon. If I pick it up, the timer starts. If I don't, I know the Scorch Cannon guy will not uh, reappear. And there goes the Shank. That's. I, I don't really understand why people say that they're, they're so kind of... Tanky. This this guy's even easier to take down. Now he will drop ten engrams. Once you've took, you don't have to go for those ten engrams. Right? I was waiting because the boss. You see, the boss was kind of hovering about there, but the boss will always teleport away. Right? So make sure you keep yourself safe. Don't rely on invis if you're a hunter. Because for some reason he will still stamp you. Now what we're going to do. So we've picked up the 10 engrams. We've deposited them. It's 60 engrams. To activate the boss. Now you're going to see in a minute here. I'm going to make my way over here. I'm just, my, what I'm trying to do now. Is get some ammunition. You're going to see right here. I took it just a little bit. Too uh, relaxed. This is not the place for this side. This is the place. Drop under here. You've got cover from the cover from the boss, and you can actually back away, and you've still got cover. Those tubes behind you give you the cover. So I'm really only going to focus on the area that's in front of us and the area we're in. I'm, I'm really hardly ever going to go over the other area. And the only reason I haven't picked the Scorch Cannon up just yet is because I wanted I wanted ammunition, right? I left the Scorch Cannon there to see if I could get ammo. So again, now you see I I seen the red on 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 there. There's the ads are coming in. So I'm just going to use the Scorch Cannon just to to clear these enemies. Now, I've still got seven shots. Now, there's enemies spawned in down there as well now. I think I just hit some heavy. So, what I'm going to do is fire a shot. You've got to charge it twice. You'll hear the audio. 
and there's the engrams. So, some people like to get... Some people like to get uh, 10, 10 at a time. I, I like to... I, I like to get as many as I can at a time. But this first one, because I put my rift down, I got my super back, I only managed to get 10. So, I'm gonna run over here, make sure I stay away from the boss. See the boss teleported right on top of me, so I slid. I put down my rift, just watch for where the boss goes, keep the crystal between you and the boss, and you really won't be in any bother. And whenever at all possible I run to the back here after I've done put in, put in uh, engrams but the most important thing is to run away from the boss put down my put down my uh, my grenade to give myself an overshield now what I'm looking for you see there on, on the screen charge will light Every time I I take a heavy hit, every time I take a heavy hit, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a a uh, an orb of light to get my because once I get protective light, I'm not saying I can't be killed, but you, you, do you understand what I'm saying? I Ads are going to find it pretty difficult to kill me. As long as I, you know, if, if I venture into a whole group of ads and I don't have a grenade, I don't have my rift, I'm asking to die. But for those kind of surprise sneak attacks that they do sometimes where you get hit by something that you're not expecting, if you've got protective light on, that gives you the time to get into cover somewhere. So I've handed, I've handed 20 in. I like to keep things rounded, so I've picked 20 up. Now, if I need to, which I shouldn't, but if I need to, I could pop my 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 well down here. But I'm just I'm, my, my my rift should keep me safe as long as the boss isn't isn't able to uh, isn't able to focus fire me, which is why I like to keep the crystal between me and him. Now, you see there, I ran away. I still had two, two burden, two, two engrams. I wasn't running away per se. There was just, because, because obviously the, at the moment, this is, in my mind, this was, this was a better run than my original Flawless. And I wanted to keep it like that. And a hell of a lot. You see, I got my chargeable light back. A hell of a lot of grenades landed at my feet. More than I was prepared to take a gamble on. They, they wouldn't have killed me. I was just being ultra careful. Which is why I say this boss is like... Well, I'll tell you what. I'll take this over the prophecy, boss. I actually... After the... I, th I accidentally... <laughs> I know it's going to sound stupid, but... I accidentally... Solo flawless the, the prophecy boss... On stream one day. And... That's about the only experience I ever had in the prophecy where it was like, oh. Every other one, it was like, I hate this. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the prophecy. It's just, it's one of those activities Bungie makes sometimes that's just, it's very tedious. This, on the other hand, I don't know. It's just, I get, I get a little bit of zero hour kind of vibes from this. It's, it's pretty cool. But again, I uh, I jumped over there. Sorry, I jumped over there and then turned back because I thought he was about to jump. And he he must have went, uh-uh. <laughs> We're not doing this. And now I've got to chase him to the side that I haven't been over yet. If you're in here with a team, now this is a solo flawless run, obviously, and it's a solo flawless guide. But if you're in here with a team, you could have, I mean, the DPS, you can get the D, you can one phase this boss, if everybody's using a sleeper. And the DPS, if you've got someone on each side, if you've got three warlocks, for talking sakes, you don't need three warlocks, but. 
if you have three warlocks, you can have somebody on each side pop the, the rift, the well, as soon as they go in. And the guy with the scorch cannon can, uh, the guy with the scorch cannon can fire at one side, like, so if I was here, he could fire from here and, and produce these, these kind of orbs. And as soon as he gets them, he could run up to the other side, so he could swap to this side. The person that was at this side then goes down the other side, and you could, you could, uh, the guy on the other side that that I don't normally go to, he'll have already picked his ten up. He's going to get another ten practically straight away, and there's going to be wells to run into. You literally could could get a damage phase after being in here. I don't know, a couple of minutes. I mean, if you even if if you, if you had three warlocks, you wouldn't even have to kill the shank and the the vandal. You could just go straight for producing twenty orbs each, twenty eight engrams each. But for the solo, there'll be a lot of people out there that think they can't do this. Trust me, you can. You just really have to take your time. Now I am being now. I've charged that up. Because I fired the last shot because I knew there's only one shot left in the can. I knew it was going to go. This first section here is probably the longest in my in, longest in, in the solo. Because I was being ultra careful. Now, when you're going for a solo flawless, I don't know if there is such a thing as ultra careful. And there we go. That gave us the last brick of heavy that I needed as well. So I'm just going to use a couple of shots from the Scorch Cannon I need. I don't think I get 20, 20 orbs here. Now, when you're coming to this section, you see I got flinched off. You can come and stand here. And if you come and stand away from where the, the engrams are dropping. Yeah, we're going to pick 10 up here. I didn't, I picked 9 up. And now I'm just going to go and bank these, because I think that's all I need. But I, I tell you what, I don't think it was. Oh, it was. Nine was all I needed. This is where I do DPS from. It keeps me away from the ants as much as possible. And then, again, activate. Activate times five. And just keep putting out those... those those headshots. Now the problem after this... So we'll just take my Scorch Cannon. The problem after this is now I don't have a super and I've got one heavy. So I'm looking for these ads to drop heavy so that I can take out the Shank and take out the Shank and the Vandal. Now as I say, I'm pretty safe here I got hit there and you can see I'm I'm looking for an orb. Because as long as I can get an orb, I'll I'll be charged for light. And as long as I'm charged for charged for light and I've got protective light on, a very slim chance that the, the ads are gonna be able to like melt me away. And I've got my chest plate has double arc resist, so you know I'm giving myself the best chance of survival by being able to tank the arc. So I, I will have produced orbs, which is what I'm coming down. Yep, no, I'm charged with light. It's no heavy, but I'm charged with light. Which, I'll just clear him out of the way. I'm trying to save as many Scorch Cannon shots as I can. The ideal scenario here. Oh, heavy. Only got two shots, but you actually don't need a ton of, of shots to take out the 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 shank and the, the vandal. So I'm gonna go back up the back. The ideas the ideal scenario as I was saying. The ideal scenario is you get your super back pretty quickly. Because once you've got your super back, you can really uh you can really go after 
the shank and the the. It's like I think I think I'm gonna put a couple of these scorch cannon shots on. But I think even without that, I think I can take down the vandal with just a fusion rifle from behind the boxes just in front of us. He was so evasive. So now I've used all my scorch cannon. Now what we want. There's, there's a couple of lads over on the, the right that get a bit feisty here, firing a couple of couple of grenades over. You can actually shoot the grenades, as you can see. So I've decided I want to try and find this ad. The boss will throw those mines. If he threw it too far behind me to be able to shoot it. So now I'm just going to see... No. That's... That's not, not cricket. There he is. He manages to run away before I can kill him. Nearly got him. There's another one. And they all just run away anyway. So I've got my super. So now I'm going to put my, my, my well down here. Act, I'm just going to go after this shank with a couple of fusion rifle shots. And now, because I'm close enough to these ads, if any of them get a bit close for my liking, I can I can take them out with the auto rifle. Now, what I'm going to do from inside the rift is I'm just going to go after this boy here. And you see what the fusion rifle is doing to me, and he is tanky. I'm going to go back over here to the left and pick up some special. There, I've just seen a brick of heavy. Which is good that I, I I didn't need it. This gave me five, which is unusual because normally it's the only issue I've got with this dungeon fight. The only issue I've got is that it takes me so long to get to get ammo. And there we go. That's him dead. Now that he's died. He's produced 10 engrams, so I'm going to use my grenade to give me uh, an overshield. Pick these up, and now I've got my super, and as you can see, uh, same thing again, put a rift down. I got my grenade straight back because it replenishes all your abilities. And I've ran in the opposite direction to what the boss is, just to keep myself as safe as possible. Back for the scorch cannon. And now I need a couple of... Uh, couple of uh, heavy bricks. Now what you'll normally find is if you bring the Scorch Cannon over to an area, the ads choose that time to appear. So now I'm just... I could use the Scorch Cannon to just clear these guys, but I, I want to make sure I give myself the best chance of getting heavy. So... I would suggest, I can see some orbs now, got charged bullet. I would suggest when you're coming over to this area, before you fire your scorch cannon, put your rift down. I'll get a proper shot in there and then we'll move back to, to here. I probably should have put my rift down when I was doing that. So we've deposited 10, 10 engrams already. Alright, so we've picked 10 up there, so I'm going to try and get as many of these ones as I can. Hopefully we can pick up. So there's 15. Drop down for these five. And that's 20. So when I deposit these, that's 30. I'm halfway towards DPS. As I say, heavy ammo is the issue here. Put your rift down. Use the crystal to your advantage. He's at the other side. And now I can just run up to the back. Be very careful when you're running away that you have deposited all of your engrams. As I say, the last thing you want is to die and not understand how you died. From a team perspective, which really isn't a solo perspective, but I, since, so when I first done this, the very first time I'd done this dungeon was the Tuesday it came out and I ran it with one of, one of our subscribers uh, a friend, a uh, person I met through the streams and, the, and through YouTube. Obviously, he's been 
comment and follow on the channel for quite some time now. What probably one of the biggest supporters on the channel. Most of you'll know him as Angry Hawaiian. Uh, I know him as Got Hate. Oh, that's his his tag. He's a great guy. We too manned it, and I mean, Angry said I carried him, but it, I worked it out solo, which was great. You know, he Angry was there, but I I, I kind of was working it all out because that's that was my my plan. So until I got solo flawless. I, ha I hadn't been in with a full team. I'd done the whole thing on my Jack Jones. There are tons, tons of people that made guides that were running it in teams to work everything out, which is fine. Uh, I'm not too sure you can call yourself a solo flawless a solo player if you're posting tons of team stuff. But, uh, yeah. So, when I started running it when I started going through with my Xbox clan, we realized that, and this is, this is not for this section, it's just, just a, another piece of information for anybody running it in teams. If one of your team, or two of your teammates, stay at the ogre section, if they stay in one of the rooms while someone else goes across the other room, you can get locked in that room and you will die. So just the, the thing I forgot to mention at the Ogre section is if you're in there with a team, move as a team. Don't stay behind and let someone else run and start another room because it could kill you. Uh, but the reason why I brought that up is because I was thinking about this section here and I was thinking you need to make sure that you deposit your... You need to make sure that you deposit your engrams. Because the last thing you want is to run away to do DPS or whatever and uh, you haven't deposited all your engrams and you're either going to die or you're going to miss DPS. Which is, and the reason I mention that is my very first flawless. That is exactly why, that's exactly why I ran it again to get a better flawless. Uh, because I... Uh, I missed DPS a few times because of that. Because I, I, I wasn't paying attention to, to my engrams. And I nearly got stung. So, I've got 15 here, which is fine. It's not, it doesn't really matter how many you collect each time. As long as you keep an eye on it and it's 60 to get to DPS. And there we go. As I say, now I will fusion him, which gets me my full complement of particle deconstruction. And we'll just keep pinging him. This time I get to do more damage because I was here. I preempted my run. So when I got and it might have looked like I was close to dying. Uh, like the boss almost killed me. It wasn't. It was because I, I tried to go a bit earlier. I tried to run away from the crystal a bit earlier. So, rinse and repeat. Now we're going to try and get some heavy. Yeah, so I, I preempted the that, that my spoils were going to go before I, you know... So when, when it gets down to either times two, if, you, if it's... If you've got an even number of spoils, then it'll be times two. It gets down to times two. You can start running away from the crystal. Oh, that's heavy straight away. Yeah, it's the biggest problem I've got with it, the, the, the boss is I don't seem to drop an absolute ton of heavy. And whenever I do, as you've seen there, I get two bricks from it. So let's see if any of these will be good to me. This is the biggest problem, is, is actually farming ammo. If I didn't need to farm ammo, this would have been a lot quicker. This boss battle would have been 10, 10, 15 minutes quicker. And just pick up any ammo. I've got chargeable eight times two. Get rid of that mine. And why hello there. 
Vandal won't. And I'm not going to bother picking, picking that up. I haven't been over the other side the whole time. Got, I, I, I have a rift if I need it. And that will happen with a couple of... One, one or two of these. Just to see where that leaves us. Ah. The ideal scenario, like I've already said, is is, and if you, if, you know, I'm obviously trying to do it as efficiently as possible, but also uh, with uh, with a bit a bit of speed. But you you don't have to be rushing anything when you're doing this. You can you take your time. The ideal scenario, you see that we've got with super. Uh, what I'm going to do is try and take take uh, take the shank first. There's the shank. I know I've got special over here, so I'm going to go over grab special. There's a lovely, absolutely lovely brick of heavy in the water there, but. I don't think I've said this yet, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, right? The water is deadly. Stay, stay out of the water. The water will kill you. So we'll put down we're, we're, we're well, and now we're gonna go af after the big boy, or the, the the little big boy. What's his name now? Grisp Grisp Rack Grisp Rax. So now, big man's there, just iron us up. I'm going to get him to walk back that way. Divine protection. Oh, there's a brick of heavy, there's special, there's everything. And now I've got my supper. And I'm just getting myself the other side of the crystal and then running to the back. And we'll move over here. More than likely, we're going to get ads when we drop down here. We definitely got the fusion rifle boy. And there we go. Now we've got we've got our scorch cannon waiting there and lo and behold. 463 ads will now come pouring into this area. And just make sure that I'm not getting overrun with with grenades. And we'll go down, pick up any special, see if there's any heavy. Oh, yes, there we go. Oh, we've got nine there. Lovely. And now what I can do is I can go and get the Scorch Cannon and we can start collecting. We There's heavy as well. I probably have full heavy now. So we're going to have a look up here. Is this where we thingy from? Yep, there we go ads but because they all come in a nice time for me ads are dead shoot from here make sure there's no ads oh there is ads there because we're gonna have to go down and collect engrams from 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 down there so we don't really want to be jumping into a whole set of ads yep we got it so i'm charging that up and there we go just Run down here, collect as many as I can. So that's 10, 12, 13, 18. So that's, that, that would be 28, which would leave me needing 32, which just goes to show that I can count. Uh, <laughs> again, just make sure that you're, you're moving, you're keeping the crystal between you and the boss. He's your main, even though those uh, those drag are throwing grenades at you. They are not your biggest problem. He is. Because uh, e even at the ogre section, the ogre hits hard. He, uh, sorry, the adds hit hard. 
but the auger can kill you uh, in, in, your, in your rift. In your well of radiance, he can kill you. So we know we're going to have ads here, but as, if, as a full new wave. It didn't look like it. And now, now we're getting a full new wave. I'll come over here, put my well down. We know we're going to get it back. And there's where. And that's, 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 I think, what makes us uh, a relatively easy dungeon is, is, is the fact that every time you pick, you've constantly got to keep picking these things up uh, for either dropping immunity or moving on to the next section. And you get your super back every time you pick them up. So, I mean, you, you can be... You can be a little bit freer with your super usage. And with the amount of damage you can do on DPS uh, with, with the sleeper, if you're in here with a team, somebody could just be on an ad clearing super, although it would be a waste. One thing that wouldn't be a waste is the is the boots. Is it the boots of the assembler? That if someone puts a rift down, it provides everybody with the uh, noble seekers that, that keep healing you. I think I think they would do a job in here if you were in here as a team. As I say, what I would do if when when I come back in here, if I bring if I come in here with clan, is I just have one person on each side, and just make sure everybody get, gets twenty of them. just use my my uh, sleeper to kill the scorch guy because I thought he was going uh, to I actually thought he was on the other side of this 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 uh, little pipe and he just completely ran away and as I say heavy special they're, they're very important but if you're running charge uh, 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 chargeable light build and you've got protective light on that is important to make sure that you've got an, an orb, at least one, to give you uh, protective light. And now we'll go over here. And that's 17. So I haven't been keeping count of how many, but I think I need like 12. 13, something like that, and I will pick this, oh no, that is DPS, told you I haven't been keeping count, and this is going to kill him, so get with five stacks, more than enough sleeper, and we'll just keep pinging him in the face, right on his head, 123,000 a shot, so I probably, I probably was a bit sa trying to be safe. Uh, I was probably trying to be really safe there, clearing out ads, making sure that ads had just been cleared on sections. But one thing I didn't do that I would urge you guys to do, especially from the warlock, is when you drop down to that lower section, the section at the back here. I would try and make you put down a put down a rift every time. Maybe not a whale. If you've got a whale, put it down, but a rift. Uh, rifts and your healing grenades is so helpful here. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Sorry I made you wait so long for this, but life happens. As I say, I will get the Master Knight Fallout later on. Uh, double reward, so it's worth running for shards and better rolls on exotics and what have you. Uh... I hope, if I don't get to say it beforehand, I hope 